23 and a half is our time here on the Morning Brew as we dive into the first of our newsmakers this morning. Uh, we just would have uh, seen an excerpt of the conversation uh, between our colleague Ria Rambley and uh, President, uh, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, basically laying out how the evac evacuation uh, process will proceed as um, they brace for the eruption of the volcano. Uh, we're going to be getting some technical updates now from um, the UE Seismic Research Center. We're very pleased and happy to have on with us this morning the director, Dr. Yurosela Joseph. Good morning and welcome to you, Dr. Joseph. Good morning and thank you for having me. Uh, Dr. Joseph, um, this is a, a time when uh, persons in your line of busy, uh, your line of business rather, are very busy and you have mixed feelings because you're seeing an amazing uh, activity in nature, but it's also a dangerous activity that is a, a major threat to human life. Uh, what is the latest information you have on what's happening with La Soufriere? Sure. Um, so as of this morning, we're seeing periods of continuous tremor. There is also glow that can be seen from above the volcano. Um, and we are seeing light ash fall downwind from the, um, from the volcano as well. So that glow that you're seeing, is that an indication of, 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 of lava being spewed well, out? Yes, and you can see in the picture that you have there, um, it, it, it's the, the hot magma or the hot lava that's um that that is glowing you know it, especially when it's darker you know you see that hot material um and you see that glow associated with it so during the night times it's more easily visible um or when it's getting darker early morning late evening and that is clearly visible um from the volcano all right. It, it seems to be, you said that there were tremors and some rumbling overnight, um, and we're seeing the magna, magma spilling out. Uh, does this mean that it's going to continue in that trend of just a spilling out, a leaking, or can we expect um, a, a massive explosion to come at some point in time? What sort of activity are we looking at? Okay, so just to be clear, the, the extrusion is continuing, but it's still contained within the crater of the volcano. So, so it's not spilling over onto the flanks. It's still contained at the moment within the crater. Um, in terms of what could possibly happen, um, it, it can go a number of ways. It could be that the, the, there is continuous extrusion at a much higher rate than was previously um, happening. Um, during the early phases of the eruption, or we can we can move to something more explosive. If we move to something more explosive, how much damage are we looking at? And would it mean the evacuation of all of uh, the islands? No, no, there will. There, so, the first part of your question as to how damaging this could be, that, that's a difficult question to answer because the volcano can show a wide range of behavior uh, as has as been demonstrated throughout this period of eruption. This volcano can show both extrusive, meaning slow, gentle oozing of magma out of the surface or explosive. And throughout its history, it has ranged from very large eruptions such as in 1902 and then smaller events such as 1979. So as to how this particular episode of unrest um, develops, it's, it's a bit difficult to say how, how destructive, so to speak. Um, the other question you asked was... Uh, With regard to evacuating the impact, all of the, uh, of the yes. islands, yeah. No, um, based, even based on the historical behavior of the, the volcano, we prepare hazard maps based on the impacts of and and the widest of course impact would be the ash fall and possibly you know pyroclastic flows what we call pdc's pyroclast pyroclastic density currents and but these would, would be limited to the area immediately around so we have zones the red zone which is the areas where there would be highest impact orange yellow and green so no the entire island would not be you know um severely impacted um, it's mostly concentrated in the red and orange zones if there is something highly explosive. But ash fall, you know, over the island is a possibility. <clears throat> in terms of neighboring islands, what could be the possible impact 
on them of the of a major explosion um so one of the biggest challenges could be um, the, the, the same asphalt that we're speaking about. Asphalt um, up in the, the higher levels of the, uh, the, the air, the atmosphere, can cause di um, disruption to aviation because, as you know, planes and ash don't go, the, you know, the engines and so on mm -hmm. could be, yeah, affected. So air traffic in, in the region could be disrupted. Any any possibility of tsunamis taking place? Not associated with the, the type of activity we're seeing right now with the volcano. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the impact of, of the ash fall that you're predicting could happen. What what impact would that have um, apart from, you know, that no, creating a no-fly zone uh, as far as yeah. it extends? What other concerns uh, should we be aware of with regard to ash fall? Yes, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. So ash, as you know, is um, is a respiratory hazard. So especially people who are sensitive, but it's not just the ash; it's the gas as well. You know, gas emissions from the from the eruption as well. But mo most of the ash, you know, is a um, respiratory hazard, particularly um, people who um, have respiratory, you know, chronic illnesses. <coughs> so um, so I do be encourage, you know keeping mask, you know, and, and this is COVID times, so I know people will, will have their mask on hand, um, you know, um, just to help with additional protection if needed. And, and the National Emergency Management Organization, they are well equipped with, uh, with masks and they will be sharing them out as needed if it is that ash fall becomes um, a challenge. In addition to the respiratory aspect of it, um, are there any other considerations with regard to the ash fall? For example, um, if you get it on your skin, is, are you going to have rashes and, and that kind of thing? Um, some people may have allergies, but um, but more so the thing about the ash is that in when it's fresh, it, it's disruptive to the... Um, like, you know, it will be covering the roads. So when the vehicles drive, it'll be recirculated into the air. So so it would be, um, it would be, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it is um, difficult to deal with when it's being remobilized, mm -hmm. you know, um, into the atmosphere every time vehicles pass and you know, um, stood up. You know, it, it, a lot of people use solar panels for, for power. When it coats the solar panels, it will, you know, of course, diminish your um, efficiency. So you have to be clearing, clearing it off. If it's thick enough that it is accumulating on your roof, then it needs to be cleared from the roof because when it's wet, it's, it weighs a lot more, and that could cause damage to your roofs. You know, um, of course, agriculture is also impacted by the ash fall. It could destroy, you know, your crop production, particularly bananas and, you know, the, some certain fruits, fruit trees and so on. So these are some of the impacts of the ash, mm. as potential impacts. As you mentioned, the agriculture sector, um, with all that ash fall um, falling on the on the growing the soil that's being used for growing food, uh, will they be able to grow food, you know, for for a while after that, or would that land have to lie fallow for quite some time? Well, I'm not sure how long. I mean, it all depends on the amount of ash, mm -hmm. uh, and but eventually the ash does um, ash lead to very fertile lands, which is actually one of the the reasons why. Um, the volcano, the area around the volcano is, you know, developed as an agricultural one. <coughs> so it will take a little while, but eventually it actually does add fertility to the soil. So it enriches the soil. Well, that's that's one plus. Um, let's look at um, safety and security issues now. They are busy uh, evacuating <laughs> citizens out of the red zones and uh, possibly the orange zones. Um, will there be anyone <coughs> left at all, or is everyone going to be cleared out? Well, as far as I'm aware, in, it's a red zone. Uh, I haven't heard anything about the, the orange zone. It's just a red. And it will be everybody that will be cleared out of the, the red zone. But they're starting with some of the more remote communities on the northern side who are on the north of the Rabaka River. Because this river is, um, if things do be developed, 
um, into an explosive eruption, this river could be infilled with some of the, um, the material being ejected by the volcano and it can cut off the transportation route for these communities. So, so the focus would be on moving those communities out first just because of the, um, the transportation issues. Mm -hmm. And in terms of observations, continued observations by uh, UV seismic, how will that happen without putting any of your scientists in danger? Well, we, we are now at the based at the Belmont Observatory, which has line of sight, you know, straight line of sight of the volcano. Um, we have people out in the field, um, of geologist and former director, Professor Richard Robertson. He's a team scientific team lead now on island, and he's in Chateau Belen now making doing observations. Um, so, so we the team that we have on island, they are well. Um, they're very experienced. They've been working um, on, on both Montserrat as well as St. Vincent and, and throughout the Caribbean. So um, they know how to, to handle themselves in terms of minimizing risk. And of course, um, airlift and whatever other um, evacuation mechanisms are already on standby to get them out. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you mentioned Montserrat. Um, does this bring back memories of what happened with the Montserrat volcano many years ago? Well, eruptions in the Caribbean, you know, um, have similar, because we're all challenged in the same way in terms of developing, you know, um, islands with, with community, rural communities, you know, around the volcano, the response and so on that's required. So, so, so there are simil similarities in terms of the behaviors and so on. But again, every volcano is different and, um, and can act differently. But, but yes, there are similarities. All right, uh, Dr. Joseph, thank you so much for joining us this morning and bringing us up to speed. Uh, the latest information, um, you know, there is activity, there is rumbling, and uh, we can see a glow uh, coming from from uh, the crater. The of summit. The mm -hmm. Yeah, so that means that there is some activity. Uh, thank you so much, and we will keep checking in with your team at UE Seismic to get all the latest so we can share the latest information um, with our viewers and listeners. Have a great right, day, and so uh, I hope your team is safe. Yes, thank you. That's it for this uh, first newsmaking session. Uh, we've got to take a break.